comments in, just feel free to get up as I'm talking. Don't feel, you know, don't feel um, uh, that you're going to offend me or anything. So get some food, get back to your you know, desks, and then we'll continue on with the talk. Uh, today's talk is backdoor threats against your software and your soul. And um, uh, you kind of kind of see as to what some of these threats are and, and how they impact not only our software, but also from the, the team security part in that commerce, what it, what it means against your, uh, against your soul. So, there you go, food is actually here, so. Let's go ahead and go get some food and then we'll go ahead and get started, so. So, who am I? Um, I'm Mano Paul, my Twitter handle is at Mano Paul. The Twitter handle for Hackformers is at Hackformers, so if you're not a follower, then you can follow uh, at Hackformers for uh, getting updates. Primarily, my identity is that I'm a follower of Christ uh, before I'm anything else. So uh, I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed to be one. And uh, in this day and age, when people think that it's lame, I think it's actually leaked for us to actually be Christians. We're a privileged crowd. And uh, my date of birth is 1990. So if you're trying to figure out what, how old I am, so I'm kind of young. So it's actually my spiritual date of birth. That's when I accepted the Lord as my Savior on, on September 30th. It was a day of sorrow, which had been turned into a day of joy. Uh, because it was the same day four years ago, my dad had passed away. And the message that the preacher was giving was, we shall turn a day of sorrows into a day of joy. And so I lost my earthly father four years ago uh, in 1986. And then in 1990, on that same day, I accepted the Lord as my personal Savior, Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And I got a heavenly father. So, you know, it all worked out good. So, uh, from a technical standpoint, I'm a software assurance advisor for an organization. But I also write a couple of books. Uh, I've written a couple of books. I'm working on the third one. And um, the books that I've written is Seven Qualities of Highly Secure Software, the official ISIS Square, the, the, the Secure Software Lifecycle Professional that ISIS Square gives out. And then for my day job, I function as the CEO of Secure Solutions. I was a shark biologist. I still believe that I'm a shark biologist. That's where my, my uh, handle comes from, which is the shark. And uh, I've got a couple of credentials. Uh, I was born a couple of years ago, a few, actually a couple of decades ago, and uh, you know, I'm not sure when that record will expire, but I know one thing that I'll live forever because I believe in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is me. Today's agenda is actually to teach Christ, to teach security, to teach Christ, and to teach security in Christ. It is the mission of platformers. And what is this, real, this topic really about? This topic is about uh, what we started a couple of uh, months ago. We started a series called the Kali Linux Operating System Series. For those of you who are not familiar, Kali is actually the penetration testing distribution that is uh, given, uh, that is done by the Offensive Security Group. And it's a really good series for us to, good, good operating system for us to use to learn some of the attacks and the hacks that hackers use. So it's about introducing the introduction to the tools that are in the Kali Linux operating system. And then the, the topic itself today is uh, the teeth security part will be for backdoor threats against your software. And then in terms of the, um, in terms of the uh, teeth Christ part, part, it'll be the backdoor threats against your soul. Right? So this actually is a good checkpoint, I think. Janice, if you want to start, we'll pause that, yes. get, uh, let the rest get some food, and then I'm actually going to get a drink as well. So. And then we'll come back and look into teeth security in terms of backdoor threats against. Our All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, teeth security, backdoor threats against your software. So what is a backdoor? A way to get in the code other than the way it was planned. Okay, a way to get in the code, code other than the way it was planned. It's almost like a built-in hack, right? Hacking is hacking is to use something the way it's not designed, right. or it's originally intended, but this is a way it was originally intended, but it's not supposed to be known. Right, okay, so it's kind of set up to issues and it's hidden, but it's a way to get in. It's almost as an intended hack. Uh, true. Think about it in more basic terms. I asked my little son, right, a seven year old, what's a back door? What do you think he's going to say? It's a door in the back. <laughs> right, so in essence, in reality, that's what it is. It's kind of a door in the back. Sometimes it is hidden, sometimes it is not. Many times it's actually masqueraded. But what is a back door? You guys have already answered that question. A back door is a means to access a system a computer system or software that bypasses the general mecha mechanisms of security, right? And that's taken from the definition taken from search security. But I say it is a possible security risk. Why is it a possible security 
risk and not necessarily always a security risk. It can be protected adequately to let only authorized people in. Right, so it could actually be used from the standpoint of remote monitoring and for the standpoint of uh, you know, espionage and other things which are necessary for either nation state security and other reasons. So it, it could be maliciously used, but it ne need not necessarily always be. But for, for all practical reasons, we will say that a backdoor is essentially not required, you know, unless the business requires you to have so, and, uh, and you want to avoid it if you can. Um, the backdoors, one of the things to keep in mind though is it's usually implanted and it's usually executed after exploitation. So you've already exploited the target system and you're going to implant this backdoor. So it's, po it's a post-exploitation technique. And it does require, in many cases, some advanced specialized knowledge. So it does require people to have knowledge about the system that they're targeting, the systems in which they're going to actually connect to, and be able to exploit, right, and execute their commands. Um, I did put in, it's not only advanced, it's also persistent, because it's kind of something like you leave the door, and you leave it there for you to come in any time you want to. The person you're entering in, the person whose house you're entering into doesn't necessarily know about it, and but you know when you can actually go and open it and get into that house, steal what you need to steal, and then come out of it. So it is persistent in many companies, many organizations. You're going to actually see backdoors implanted, and they stay just they just stay over there, right? And then when the attacker so chooses, they actually exploit that backdoor. So it is persistent. So in, in to avoid kind of the overuse of the cliche, right? APTs. Uh, advanced persistent threat. A backdoor essentially is an advanced persistent threat. And in many situations, it's going to be there in a very covert channel, in an undetectable manner. So the way it works is it works with the, with the principle of subtlety. And uh, Bruce Schneier actually writes in the Wired uh, magazine and the opinion column in, the, in that article, How to Design and Defend Against the Perfect Backdoor. He kind of gives a certain, certain um, characteristics, one of which is low discoverability and the other is high deniability. And so it's used uh, in those characteristics where you don't want the backdoor to be discovered and when it is discovered, it should be, you should be able to you know, uh, repudiate against it. And so it can deny that it was yours or so. But it essentially is a covert channel. It's not your main door and that's kind of the, what a backdoor is. Now there are different kinds of backdoors. There is the operating system backdoor itself. Uh, there are crypto backdoors which are used for, uh, the crypto backdoor is actually used for uh, having, it's more like a trap door, you have a master key, and then that is used to be able to decrypt any information that's on that channel. Uh, we're not actually going to talk much about that in the context of this uh, uh, talk. The operating system backdoor, there are a couple that are in Kali, Simothia is one, uh, the Drupal uh, BD or the backdoor is another one which acts more like a netcat, PowerSploit is another, actually PowerSploit we will have to probably have a whole talk for itself because it's pretty expensive, pretty extensive. And then we have some backdoors on the web, and since the web is so prevalent, I'll actually focus this talk more on the web backdoors uh, today. Uh, do anybody know why in the picture of why, why is there a picture of the fish on the screen? If you look at the picture of the fish on the screen, there's one inside its mouth, and there's something inside its mouth. It's like a pearl. It's like a pearl. That's actually an isopod, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a crustacean parasite. It's called Simothia exigua. And what it does is, it's known as the tongue replacing parasite. It attaches itself to the tongue of a fish, and it ends up actually draining out the blood from the tongue of the fish. It's disgusting, right? And atrophies the tongue and replaces it. Now, other than that, it doesn't actually do any damage to the fish. The fish can live till it's natural life and it dies uh, naturally, but uh, it acts then as a tongue for the fish, but it is a parasite. Simothia is one of the tools that is written in Kali, that is, that's available in Kali, which functions very much like that, and so it's an operating system backdoor. And then we have the web backdoors as well. Now I classified the backdoors based on their impact, and some of them are just innocuous, which are not meant to be malicious, and these are things that developers would essentially write. Especially like uh, you know, folks who are in support may actually find this, and I don't know Eric if you found find this, where developers would implant in their code certain impersonation context changing code, and they'll plant it in there just so they can come back and log in as someone else. And often what happens that kind of gets moved into production systems, and then somebody would use that for malicious game, malicious purposes, as opposed to the intended support purposes. But it's otherwise known as a maintenance hook, so you'd find it in like support systems. But, uh, you know, it essentially is a backdoor. But the big ones that we're worrying about are the ones that are monitoring backdoors, like your big brother is watching you kind of thing. 
that is used and implanted so that they can actually tap into all the, all the traffic that's going on on that network and be able to get more information that they shouldn't be. Or the ones that are used for malicious purposes which are intentionally planted in there to do damage to your organization or your company. So what are some of the things that are from an impact standpoint, you, you look at backdoors, you can of course eavesdrop using a backdoor, you can bypass all of the authentication because it's a different channel by which the, the attacker is going to come into your system. At will access kind of was a big thing because in fact Kali operating system, Kali Linux operating system puts all of the backdoors under the category of maintaining access. So which means anytime they want to have access to your target system, they'll be able to get into it. So a backdoor's impact is they can choose to attack at will. When they want, they can execute the backdoor or you know take advantage of the backdoor and get into your system. In most cases, it's going to be at administrative or rootkit level, which can pretty much do anything as a super user could do, change input output operations, disable, delete stuff on your, on your system. And you'll actually see in the demo some of the things that we could do in terms of not just recon and eavesdropping, but also the damage that we can see in terms of accessing and doing delete operations and other things. So what do we need to do to be able to protect against this? Um, so this slide is actually put in there because my wife was here last time when I was speaking and she said it was good, it was a good talk and then she kind of, you know, wipes when they give you, it was a good talk but, right? So the, the but part of it was that I actually talked about all the offensive side which is what I like, right? But I didn't talk about the defense at all. So she said that you have to tell people how they need to protect against themselves. And we did the talk on seeking passwords, seek and you shall find passwords and providence. And she said, you need to be able to protect, you need to tell them what they need to do to be able to protect. So I put this control slide here, you know, thanks to my wife um, who kind of um, uh, motivated me to do so. Uh, although this is kind of the boring stuff. <laughs> this is the necessary stuff, <laughs> all right? So we have exploitation defense, which is first patch. In this, I said that the backdoors are post-exploitation, which means don't, if you don't get exploited, then chances of you getting a backdoor in your system is less, right? Or, or, or minuscule or, or impossible in some situations. So one is don't get exploited. Second is examine, right? Examine, monitor your system, scan, check to see if the appropriate controls are in place. Not only if they are actually existing, but if they are also effective in their operations in protecting against any backdoors or monitoring agents. And finally, if you do find one, then eliminate by removing or delete or uninstall whatever is necessary to be able to get rid of that backdoor. In some situations, if there are polymorphic kind of backdoors, every time you try to remove them, they'll actually try to change into their form to something else, and it becomes very pr problematic. So if it's the kind of a rootkit in implantation based on a backdoor, then you may have to just kind of completely scrap that system and restart that system from, from ground zero. So just try to remove, you know, do what is necessary to be able to eliminate it. The backdoor tools, as I mentioned in Kali, are operating system backdoors, tunneling tools, we'll actually have another talk on that, uh, you know, time permitting and when we can get to do the research and set up the systems to be able to demonstrate that correctly. Uh, and then web backdoors, I'll focus more on the web backdoors today uh, in terms of a demo itself. All right, so here's a demo and so we can go ahead and, uh, um, Janice, we can go ahead and actually move to the screen on this. So the steps in this demo is going to be, I'm going to first generate a backdoor script, then we're going to have to get that script onto that, the target system, which we've exploited. Then I'm going to connect from the attacker system to that target system, and then we do command and control, do whatever we need to do, be, be able to do so through that backdoor. The tools that I'm going to look at is Weebly, Web Backdoor Cookie, so WebAku, and then if we have time, the Simatova, which actually is kind of a operating system backdoor, which you could inject into a process, <coughs> And then every time the process is running, actually you have a backdoor and an open connection that's listening on. So we'll see which ones uh, uh, we can co cover. But I'll certainly do the first two. All right, so let's get to the demo part of it before we get to the next portion of our talk. And this, I'm gonna switch to my Kali operating system, which is my attacker box. And I'm also gonna <coughs> focus on the victim box. So on my left, I my attacker box, this is your hacker box, and on the right is the victim, the one that we've compromised or the one that we, we, we have exploited. In, some, in certain situations, you may not actually have exploitation. You could still have uh, the person through a backdoor get exploited. In this case, I'm gonna show that, you know, it's already been exploited, but um, I could just do a shell, like a metaphorical shell or something to be able to get on and exploit that system and be able to upload, this, upload the file as well. Okay, so let me just log in here. Okay, 
So my left is the, the Rapster, Kali, the root of Kali is my, my attacker box. And the first thing I want to do is to find out what the IP config is. So the IP address is for this. So this is listening on 10.2.1.1.5.5.12. That's the IP address of the attacker. And then on the victim, it's 10.2.1.1.5.5.16. So attacker, and, and so one is 12, the other is 16. All right, I'm going to come here and then I'd like to just go to applications. Kali Linux, maintain access, web backdoors, and then read the read. So you get a bug too on the other side, right? The other one is, yeah, the, the victim is also an Ubuntu box. You could also do it on a, um, on a Windows box or any box. Actually, it's not it's not operating, operating system specific. The reason I chose Ubuntu is because I wanted a, a PHP uh, website running. And so on this target box, I actually have a WordPress um, app that is running. So the WordPress over here is called the Shark Bytes, all right? And um, anyone know what this is? John, it's got some binary code in there. John 11, 100? Yeah, it's, it's, it's 0, 0, 0, 0001, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So that's numerically John, John 316. 316, yeah. Yeah. Right, and then it sets it as another BX, 0x, 13c, so. Well, so that's just a, just a box, there's a PHP uh, app that's oh. running over there. It's a word, WordPress app. All right, so we go over to our attacker box and I'm gonna actually, first and foremost, what I need to do is generate the script for it. So I'm gonna actually use Weebly. And to generate the script, the command is generate. I'm gonna have to give it a password, so give me a good password. One, two, three, four. <laughs> All right, so one, two, three, four is the password. It's a combination of my luggage. Right. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna just say, um, I'm gonna actually create And it tells me that the, the backdoor file has been created with the password 1234. In fact, let me do this. Let me actually create this file in my web root so that, all right? And then I'm going to navigate to the web root so that it's easier for me to actually pull off from that website. Uh, VBC application LSL. So I have a file there called wp underscore config.php. This is the one that we just created. Uh, today at 628 bytes. I'm going to remove this uh, WP underscore config.html for the reason. All right, so we just have two files, WP underscore config.php. Now that's actually the backdoor script that we that we wrote. So if I was to just cat on that. Uh, Car, not cat. Yeah. <coughs> it's, you know, obfuscated code that is in there. So nothing nothing super, just obfuscated backdoor code that is in there, all right? So now, well, I have the backdoor script created. Now I have to actually, actually grab it from the target or upload it to the target. If I exploit the system, I can upload it to the, the system, or if I've already exploited the system, the target, then I can grab from there. Um, any means you can get this, this back onto the system. So let me get to open this tab here, and then we'll just do the sudo wget. Um, HTTP 10.2.1.1 from the attacker box, which is 112 um, WP underscore config dot PHP. you notice is uh, the wget command didn't work. In fact, it transferred zero bytes because it's not taking this obfuscated backdoor script onto that system. And it's a PHP file, so it's not actually taking it. So what I had to do is, I'm like, how do I get this thing on that system? You can go back and simply do a rename of your file from PHP to it's got the same bytes, it's just renamed differently. And then you go to upload it. So in this case, now let me do HTML, and it transferred that file over. OK? In fact, what I need to do is let me see if I can do this. And then I'm going to run that same command, says upload sys to that location. 
connection, now tell us hell on that. Tells me that the file is there. Actually, I'm not using it. In fact, you know what I need to do? I need to move it into the WordPress directory. So let me go to WordPress directory and then move that file in there. Okay? LS L. WP. See if you can see underscore config. There you go. All right? Now, what you notice is there's actually a WP dash config.php file as well. Now, the reason why I actually named it WP underscore, underscore config is so that if somebody's looking at this, you know, it just may seem like, hey, it's another file out there, it's probably something old, or they may not really catch it. If I named it, uh, you know, Eric Schaefer's backdoor, then somebody, <laughs> <laughs> it may be a problem, right? So somebody will kind of fly yeah. on that. So we have the file now. What we need to do then is actually rename that file again back to what we wanted it, which is a config.html to WP underscore config. Right? And it's going to tell me I need to do that with sudo command. So, what is, uh, so I've got wp underscore config php. Now, in order for me to actually just execute this, now I've got the backdoor on the big target, but I still need to be able to execute it. So, a couple of ways I can do it is get them to trick them into actually clicking that php file and then open it, or just write, write a script or something that will execute this command. Just open up any browser, um, localhost. WordPress, wp underscore config dot php. Now we opened up a browser, nothing, just like no script thing saying, no errors coming up. So somebody who clicks on that file may just think, hey, it's a blank page or it's a php file that didn't get rendered, they may just leave it over there. Now, just, just by doing that, you've actually established and created a cookie by which you can connect to it now. So the thing is active, the back door has been opened, now of course you now connect to it, from the attacker box, you go, we believe, and, I don't remember the syntax here, so I'm going to do dash edge, we believe, um, connect to the box to run the command. Um, the attacker box, the victim box is 21155.16 WordPress WP underscore config.php. And then it requires a password and a password super secret password that Bill generated was 1234, right? And you connect it. Now what you notice actually is you actually have a terminal shell on that victim, right? Through a red back door. So over here now, if I just do a uname A, it's a Linux white shark, which is this box over here, right? It's a Ubuntu server, it's not a Kali operating system. So I could then do look, look at this usage for DF, um, LS list all the files that are over there, right? And pretty much do a lot of damage to to this. Now, if you notice, there's some other things that we could do. This is a tiny shell. I think it is hell. And this actually allows me to be able to do a lot more. So if you see, by getting this backdoor using the Weebly script, I could do an audit of all user files that are there. I could actually map web files, grab all of the etc passwords that are there. So let's try that. So let's just do an audit of Etsy passwords. And it dumps out every user that is being used for the different processes that are used on that system with uh, you know, their information and they can take this and crack, crack this. Or you could go and do mapping of the files, so map web files. Um, or it's going to ask me to give, me the, give the path for the web files, which is URL based path, and if I give that entire path, then it'll actually map out all that files, right? So that's one I could do. I could also do system.info, I believe is what it is. And this tells me that this is find IP, is the, the victim IP that we, that we targeted, what the base directory was, what the script is that's being running, the host name, a lot of information. So at this point, I can pretty much do anything. In fact, I can go over here and do even SQL commands. So uh, in the interest of time, well, how much, what are we doing in time? 1231? Okay, so I need to get into the other part of the, the talk here as well. So I'll show you the other back door. In the interest of time, I'll leave, I'll probably should see if I can do this. Give me one second. Hell. There is a whole SQL dump SQL console. So I could get a SQL console on this block, right? In order for me to do that, if I do this, it's telling me I need to be able to pass in the SQL username and the SQL password. 
Now, how do I find the same <coughs> username and the secret password? It's WordPress simply. Huh? WordPress, WordPress config, config, right? So, in order for me to do that, I could go get to see what are my files. And there's a WordPress config.txt file. Okay? Now, in this backdoor script, it doesn't let me actually allow, it doesn't let me um, read the script directly from the target system. I'll have to download the script onto my system, so I'll have to go and run one of the other commands, download it, and then read it. So I'll show you the other backdoor, the web uh, backdoor cookie, which allows me to actually run commands on the on the target system itself. So we'll, we'll hey, quick question, Mono. Sure. So, so you drop this, you drop the script as root on the target machine and left it its ownership by root. Is that why you have root on this machine, or could you have could you have challenged it to dev 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 dash data? I could still get. Yeah. Would, would, would you, right. you would still have root? Yeah, I would still. In fact, it's a good wow. question because you'll see that the next backdoor, right, uh, will actually use the, the ID, will be the www.date-data, yeah. yeah. is the ID in which you're going to be able to connect to it. And then you'll be able to see all the. So, how does Weebly give you root on the target machine? How does Weebly give me root on the target machine? Yeah. I don't know. I guess I'm just curious how, how, how you're, you're running as root versus. versus some other user just like process, some user. like uh, Apache or something like that. I, I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. I can actually look into it and see what, what it's doing. In fact, to be honest, I haven't even looked at the obfuscated code to see what's, because <laughs> you can generate the de-obfuscated code of the yeah. backdoor <coughs> and see what it's doing, but uh, I haven't oh, okay. done it. But, yeah, no yeah. Hey, I like to attack and break things. Fair enough. You guys have to fix the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Does the browser still be open on the, the victim's computer? Or is like once the cookie's made, then the, they set. can close the browser? Okay. It's set. So, so what happens is next time you come, you just invoke that again, yeah. and then it's you, you connect to it. So. Yeah. Right. so let me exit out of here and um, show you the next backdoor, which is um, WebAku, or that is um, the web backdoor cookie is what it's called. So we'll get to that. Over here, I want to go and clear what we did. So it's a complete new test pass. And then remove all the files that are underscore. <clears throat> OK? Yeah. All right. So let's get back over here onto our box and see what we need to do. Again, the same process. You generate the backdoor script, it's a different uh, script that we have generated, the WebAku, and in this case, to generate this, the, the flag is dash G, to generate the backdoor code, and then dash O is required for the case, which is the output of the file name. So I'm actually going to put CD to var root, okay, remove this old file. Backdoor file web p underscore config the PHP has been created. So same thing over here. It's not actually going to let me copy the PHP file, so I have to rename that file. And I'm going to rename that to HTML. And on this box here, I'm going to get sudo. Um, and then we'll just rename this file here back to and nothing 
something happens, just there the back door is now open and ready for us for the next day. And that, that browser see. has to stay open like that? It need not be. The okay. cookie is set, so I can close the browser now. And, right. So right here, on this, uh, so over here, I'm going to go and try to connect mm -hmm. to it. And then the target and the URL that I'm going to give is the victim box, 10.21155.16. says that it's actually connected with what the ID. The ID is the www data. So it's actually connecting with just that that Apache, the web WordPress user account. All right. And over here now the same kind of commands I could run ls. But what in this case what I was telling is I can actually execute the, the commands also on the target. So to read the file, the con config file, I just cat wp config.php and it dumps it out on your standard output screen. And you can see over here the MySQL database. The shark bytes is the name of the WordPress database. The username uh, is Rathstar, which is my son's you know, handle or his nickname. And then the database password is Elite Shark. So you have this information, and you basically can run the other command to run the SQL console, connect to the database, drop commands, drop tables, you know, try stuff. And users and all that stuff. Um, other things that you can do over here, um, fellas, uh, I think, and then you name, A should give you all the information, which is pretty much similar to what we had in the other script. So there's another cookie, another backdoor cookie uh, exploit that you could do. Um, I'm seeing if there's anything else I missed to show on this backdoor. So. <coughs> Mara, is there anything you could do with um, managing cookies and managing scripts or blocking scripts to you, make this harder? You could. So from the from the managing cookie standpoint, of course, the cookie timeouts and things that you would automatically, you know, remove. Cookie management is always going to be hard because that is required for you to keep persistence, right? So as part of the old user experience standpoint. Um, in terms of any time you see backdoor connections or channels, the problem is this going over open ports like 80 and 443. So you're really not going to be able to filter much, right? Uh, but if you see connectivity on this side with the, the, the process that's connecting to, actually it's a terminal process, but it's over an 80 port, right? Or a 443 port, then you then uh, you could try to monitor and protect a little bit. Uh, other than that, backdoors, at this point, since you've already post-exploited, right? And you want persistence, the game is kind of over already, right? So you're already in the system. And game's if you, over if you set something, they can change it. <laughs> right, and, and it's also yeah. like, uh, um, they're already down you're kicking them. That's kind of the thing I would say, right? So, <laughs> so don't do it. <laughs> but to defend yourself, then you're down, go into the, the field what position. Field field position. position. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Hey, like I said, my wife is the one who wants all the defense stuff. <laughs> I, I care about the offense stuff. No, it's good, it's good stuff. No, I, I will actually find out. I don't know for sure if I can, and I, no, I didn't give you a full answer, but I'll find out. And, you know, I'll, one of the things that I plan to also do is in the AppFormers website, start writing up these into small modules so that you can just put them out for in the blog for people to be able to use and read. So, okay. cool. so let's get back to our talk here. Um, I'm not going to show you the OS backdoor. Probably we'll do it another time uh, because I have to actually hook into a process and I was going to take time. And then at that point, it's pretty late. So every time that process ends, then you know I have an OS backdoor to give you access to the OS itself. Simotoa is the one that is most prevalent, prevalent and most mostly used, other than PowerSploit. PowerSploit. So so take a look at it if you're interested in, in seeing more about that. So. All right. So this next part is the more important part. So we kind of saw what a backdoor is, what you can do with it. The feed security part is kind of what's, what we've done. The feed price part is backdoor threats that are against your soul. And interestingly, they kind of work in the same principle and the analogy is kind of very similar to how backdoor threats work against our soul. So what is a soul backdoor? I think the Bible has a definition for it. It actually says in 1 Peter 2, 11, there are fleshly lusts which war against your soul. And then the definition of fleshly lusts is given in 5, Galatians 5, 17, from the new, new language, the, you know, I took the King James Version and then I didn't understand some of the words that they had. So it, <laughs> in, 
in parentheses I put the new little translation. Alright, so, so uncleanness is impurity, so adultery, fornication is immorality, uncleanness, impurity, lasciviousness, okay, so which is lustful pleasures, I guess. Uh, I don't know if I'm even pronouncing that correctly. Idolatry, witchcraft, as well as sorcery, hatred, variance, so for quarreling, emulations of jealousy, wrath, anger, strife, selfish ambitions, seditions, dissensions, heresies, divisions, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, like wild parties, these are all things that are part of the soul, uh, to a part of the flesh, you know, which act at war against the soul. So these are the works of the flesh, flesh which are manifest. So if you were to put yourself, and if I was to put myself, at least one of this is going to hit us somewhere, right? So not murder, but you know, so something's going to hit us, and we're going to actually have some struggle with the flesh and the spirit. And so a soul back door is actually fleshly lust, is what I would say from the biblical definition as to how it tries to impact what we have as part of the, 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 the assurance that we have in Christ. Then the categories against post-exploitation, when I talk about post-exploitation, it's one, it's post-exploitation, it's got advanced specialized knowledge, so in the Bible, actually, Daniel 11.28 talks about the Antichrist saying that he shall come and do exploits, all right? He shall ex do exploits against God's holy people. So in the time of the tribulations, the word actually exploits, in fact, one of the the reasons and one of the early uh, days when hat formers was just formed, uh, as I was reading the Bible, I was seeing all these terms. I was seeing the word uh, exploit, and I was like, that is so cool, right? Like, you know, it's, uh, it's about the Bible is so much, like, from a secular standpoint, I can understand it. The word aha, which stands for the Austin Hackers Anonymous, that's there in the Bible too. I don't know if you guys know that or not, where the people are jeering and mocking the Israelites and saying aha, aha, when they were getting, you know, when they were getting uh, um, captive, ca captive by the Babylonians and the Assyrians. So, so it's, it's a lot of good stuff is there in the Bible. So, um, so the Antichrist shall do exploits. But what's cool is, you read a couple more verses and it says that the saints of God shall do exploits too. So that is where we come in. And so, but this is about post-exploitation, the Antichrist and the devil, he does try to do exploits. Advanced and specialized knowledge. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, uh, Lucifer was known to be more, much more wiser than Daniel. Now, Daniel was one of the wisest in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian kingdom. And he says that even ten people's wisdom was unparalleled, like not matched to that of Daniel and, and his friends. And here we see actually where Lucifer is being talked about as the prince of Pilate, whose wisdom was far greater than that of, of, of uh, Daniel. And so in this case, we can actually understand that the devil is not somebody who is very, uh, you know, he's not, he's not dumb, he's pretty smart. Right? And uh, he's also very persistent. In fact, uh, Jesus, when he talks about the devil, he talks about and he says in John chapter 8, verse 44, that he was a murderer and a liar from the very beginning of time. Right? And so those who don't believe in him are the children of the devil, is how he defines uh, you know, the children of the devil. But if you think about it, even in the temptation of Christ, Matthew 4, the devil was very persistent. He actually didn't just give away after the give up after the first temptation. He tried, you know, went kept on trying till he got he tried to get uh, Christ to fall, and Christ did not. So we have uh, not once, but thrice, the temptation of Christ. And so we have, uh, and by the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every which way that we are, we have been or we are, and yet he came out sinless and guileless and uh, without blame. So he was tempted by every means, not just once, many times. And I talked about the characteristics of a back door. Uh, in the spiritual sense, uh, subtlety is again very clear, very, uh, is one of the things as part of the as part of how the Bible says that don't be don't be fooled or let that I fear is what the, the apostle writes Paul writes in Corinthians to the book to the church of Corinth to the church in Corinth he says I fear that you like Eve will be beguiled uh, you know by the subtlety of the devil so he's a very subtle guy in fact in other references in the Bible it says he was a subtle serpent right so he was very crafty of, of all of God's creation and so. Uh, a subtlety that is so that your minds will be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now, what's that simplicity that is in Christ? The simplicity is very simple, you know. It's about Christ who loved you and thus do you love him back. And we love him back by believing in him first and then, you know, um, heeding to what he has to say so that we are servants and his children. Um, the devil also uses a covert channel. In fact, John chapter 10 is very clear where it says, whoever doesn't come through the door, through the sheep gate or through the door, right, is a thief or a robber. And so if you look at it, he that enters not by the door, uh, as a covert channel or a back door, and the devil tries to get into our lives in um, other surreptitious means. 
The, the, the one thing that is missing in a soul backdoor, which is different from a security backdoor, is that there are no innocuous backdoors when it comes to the soul, right? Uh, it's always going to be either monitoring or it's going to be malicious. It's actually going to be a combination of both. In fact, the scripture says in the book of Job that uh, Satan once goes up to when the sons of God are gathered up in heaven and uh, when God asks him, where did you come from? He says, this is what he responds. He says, I've been patrolling the earth watching everything that's going on, which means he's been monitoring, he monitors everything that's going on in this, in this world. So in a sense, you could say that Satan is a spiritual big brother, right? Uh, you know, big brothers and the big brother programs here. I'm not saying Obama is Satan. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering. <laughs> Oh, the Antichrist. Uh, you know, although Obama care that's getting had is a completely different story. Uh, so don't tweet out. Mono just said uh, Obama is Satan. <laughs> right, so, uh, oh, the government. Right, so, so Satan is a spiritual big brother. Uh, is this is a spiritual big brother trying to you know monitor us? But then he's always malicious. There's still nothing good in it. It's always malicious, and all he does is to try to steal, to try to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus actually responds to over there and he says in John chapter 10, 10, I, Jesus, am come that you might have life, and not just life, but you might have it more abundantly. Right. So the controls walk in the spirit, right? So what's the first thing you can do in order for us to be able to not be susceptible to flesh, fleshly lusts is to walk in the spirit so that you cannot fulfill the, 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 the lusts of the flesh. Uh, but interestingly, what that basically means is patch your life, patch my life with the Lord Jesus Christ, right? He is the one patch that is needed. And the good thing is, unlike Microsoft patches, you don't have to upgrade him. <laughs> right? so, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, uh, you know, you patch your life with the Holy Spirit of, of Jesus Christ. Um, examine, right? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation, is what the Bible says. So, don't fall into temptation, watch and pray. And be always on the guard, because why? The devil is like a roaring lion. He's always monitoring us, you know, trying to get into our soul um, through any channels he can to flesh me that which are the back to the soul. And then finally, eliminate, which is kind of the same control. So eliminate um, is hide his word. In fact, the Bible says, I have hidden your heart, word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. And what is the word actually? In one sense, it is the scripture, the written word that has been given to us. But the Bible also tells us that the word became flesh. So Jesus became flesh. The word of God, which is prophesied in the, in the garden, as the one who would come for the salvation of mankind in Genesis 3.15, when God curses Satan, says that I will put enmity between you and the seed, right? And between your seed and, and the, the seed of the woman, between you and the woman, and the, between your seed and the seed of the woman, which essentially is Jesus Christ was born of a woman, right? The seed of a woman. In fact, interestingly, there was no man involved in the, in, the, in, the, in the begottenness of Jesus Christ. And so the seed of the woman is reflecting Jesus Christ. And the word becomes flesh. And that word that God spoke in the garden becomes flesh and dwells amongst us so that we can, and we behold his glory, the glory of the one who was begotten of the Father full of grace and truth, speaking of Jesus Christ in John chapter 14, verse 1. So, the last part of this, and this is kind of crucial, is to teach security in Christ. You kind of see, you saw uh, uh, teach security in terms of backdoors. We saw some examples of web backdoors. We saw teach Christ from the biblical standpoint. Now, teach security in Christ. Here's the first question I have to ask, and it's a question that I ask myself as well. What are some of the backdoors that you can think of that can affect your soul? Right? And so this is a time for discussion, this is a time you open up to think about things that you would want to share, what are some of the things that you struggle with, um, you know, be also uh, smart about what you share. Uh, there was one church gathering where they said this is a time when we are all going to, it was actually a men's gathering, we're all going to actually confess, because there's a verse in the Bible that says confess your sin to one another, right? Uh, but also be smart is what the Bible says, because one of the guys goes, I lusted after your wife. <laughs> 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 There's too much information here, so, yeah, so what are some of the bad tools that, uh, that you can think of that affect your soul, and also in, from the standpoint of security, if there's something that you want to share, or an experience that you had in your workplace, that would be interesting. In fact, the very last part is, the, Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. In order for us to be able to hide Christ in our hearts, the word in our hearts, so that we don't fall into fleshly hearts, we need to be able to actually let Christ in first, and he stands at the door of our heart. Right, wanting to come in and he knocks and if anyone hears his voice, he's willing and will open up the door, then he's willing to come in and to be not just the guest of that house or that life, but the host of that life. And Jesus actually said that he is the overt channel. I am the door, and anyone who walks through him shall be saved, which means that they shall go find pasture. So in him is eternal life, and there is no other means. John ten nine says that. So 
So with that said, we'll go ahead and leave it open for discussion. And in closing thoughts, if you like the presentation, you can of course subscribe via email. You can follow up and tweet at Atformers, get LinkedIn, email us, uh, or else you can give a feedback if you didn't like it as well. Um, and then catch temptation, enter God's providence, which is Jesus Christ. And then finally, be on guard, watch and pray always. Thank you and God bless. So with that said, let's go back to the session time. If there's anything you guys want to share, any questions, uh, if, you, if I know the answer, I will tell you. If not, I'll make one up and then make it seem like you have to believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mark. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the um, uh, current entertainment, I think, is, uh, is a backdoor. It makes things mm -hmm. normal that are evil. Sure. And, you know, I mean, everybody's vampires are a real big topic today. And those are people who have lost their soul. Living dead, if you will, right. and you know, uh, attributing the creation of the earth and of man to random chance is right. another one where you have perverted the uh, truth, right. and people were taught from a young age to believe lies. Mm -hmm. So I agree. In fact, uh, just recently we were uh, we had Ken Ham, who is from Answers in Genesis. He's one of the Christian apologists who does a lot of debate against uh, the evolutionists. Um, he, he was talking about, uh, he had come to a great Baptist church and we had a chance to go listen to his talk. And I took, I'd taken my son, and a um, seven year old, and my boy was actually writing down a lot of the notes. And many of the things that he was first struggling with was the things that he's hearing in the school that were not tying up to what was uh, in the scripture. And when Ken said the earth is only 6,000 years old, 4,000 years you know, before Christ, 2,000 some odd years after Christ, it took a long time for my son to kind of get to understand just that it's, it's, a, it's a young earth, right? And, um, and then the whole millions of years in the Jurassic Park and all that stuff, uh, how does that all fit into the Bible? And then Ken goes on to say, Job chapter 40, right? It talks about the Leviathan with the tail that has as big as the cedars of Lebanon. Now, the cedars of Lebanon were with girth that was huge, right? And so the only description of an animal like that could be attributed to the sauropod or the brachiosaurus or the brontosaurus. Um, but the New International Version, the study Bible itself, says that that tail is a description of a hippopotamus or, a, or, a, or, a, or an elephant. In some cases, they say the Leviathan is that of a crocodile. Now, if you think about that, right, um, even from like some translations, sometimes we get mis misinterpretation because the tail of an elephant, how many of you have seen the tail of an elephant or a, or a hippopotamus? They're like really little, mm -hmm. tiny, you know, with a tuft of hair on the end. That's not like a cedar of Lebanon, right? And so there's no way that could be a proper translation of that, uh, of the, or the or proper description of that. So we should be careful because in some cases, even from within there is subtle attacks, right? The, in fact, my mom gave me a book called If the Foundations Be Destroyed. And, uh, what that is is about the it takes the the author takes the comparison of the King James version and the NIV and this is not really about I'm not bashing NIV or anything it's a good good uh, translation for people to read and get quickly you know uh, understand the scripture itself uh, but there are certain things that are omitted like one Thessalonians one one it says uh, clearly in, in the King James it says grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and the NIV basically says grace and peace unto you right. It omits the Lord, the Lordship of Christ. It omits God our Father. So, the, the, so that's one angle of it. And you know, false preachers are the other one that is that's, that's attacking us. But uh, so that's But the, the the big one, like you said, is the world system is wanting them to believe in something that is not true. And our children are the ones that are getting impacted most. Yesterday we went to the inner space caverns for, for school trip, and the lady said, uh, who was the tour guide, said, "This is twenty-seven thousand." Uh, or 27 million years old or something to that effect. And my son looks at me like, do I, do I, should I say? I'm like, question her, how does she know, right? And, yeah. and uh, so it's, it's important for our children to, to get, but you're right, the media and the, the, uh, you know, the world system itself is trying to pervert it. And yeah. that's a back door by which they try to get in. And, and what is unfortunate is we, we end up getting kind of desensitized to it. Yeah. And, uh, and over time we just accept it. And uh, even like we, we, we accept one part of it and we don't accept the other part, but we, we ourselves kind of fall prey to it many times and then it's like always perpetually impacting us. So.
on that, on that kind of, in, just continue on the entertainment note, my wife challenged me a few years ago um, uh, that, you know, I mean, in, in, I don't know, 99% of the cases of any TV show I've ever watched in the last 15, 20 years or so, and for the most part, any movie, there are like zero really wholesome relationships from a complete Christian standpoint. If you sure. consider thorough, now clearly all of us are imperfect and all of us make mistakes, but we're talking about things that are glorified, right? This, right. Like, this is the way to do it, you know, right. versus I've stumbled and now I'm doing it well, right? right. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's a way that, for, for me, and this is the way that my wife challenged me, for me, I didn't really consider it too much like in this way. Right. I, it was, it was I, I considered it innocuous. Right. And the challenge that, that, that she gave me and that, that I have since tried to question and proceed with is that, you know, listen, watching something, uh, uh, you know, as, as entertaining as a story as it might be, that kind of attitude can let slip something into your soul that, that can uh, right. uh, begin a process that, is, that, that benefits right. Satan and not right. God. Right, right, right. absolutely. Think about TV in general. You, know, you watch TV, you don't really see, uh, unless you're watching a religious channel or you know, a, a church on TV or something like that, just regular you know, channels, you won't see a lot of mention of anything spiritual or God or right. anything. Maybe a few passing yeah. words, but just that constant, that's even more so. It's just everything is information, but it's just all information that has nothing that's been sure. sanitized. So right. that you know, over time, that, that carries over, and I think, you know, you the less you think about God, right. then that leaves you that yeah. much more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So right. sure. you, over time, you get flooded with all this information, and it's just information, information, information. None of it's, right. maybe 1% of it's, say, spiritual. That we, oh, yeah, I'm going to pray right. or something like that. So it just keeps going. Yeah, I actually, in that same light, I'll actually add on to this, especially for us when we are like we are either serving and we're doing, you know, we are with, with, with being Christ followers. One of the things that I've used is I've used movies to speak to you, right? Uh, from from Pirates of the Caribbean to The Lord of the Rings. These are things you watch for entertainment factor, but there are some spiritual you know, analogies you can draw. And when you talk to them in those same terms, then they try to understand better. So we can use, like in Habakkuk actually it says, by his own weapon, God destroyed Satan, right? Mm -hmm. So if he's gonna use, if he's gonna try to have chapter three says that, if he's going to use something to like media or the TV, then we've got to be also cognizant. We can't just devoid ourselves. We need to be cognizant of what's going on there so that we can talk properly and have the ability to be able to defend our faith. But you're right. The more time you give to TV, which is not think, not doesn't lead you to think about God, the more chances of, of us are to fall. So. Well, interestingly enough, one of the reasons that the entertainment industry got to where it is is because Christians kind of said, that's evil and we have to stay away from it. And there are now uh, companies that are producing, um, and they're, uh, Fireproof is a good example right. of, of a, you know, a, a biblically based or, um, you know, based on the, uh, the effect of Christ on people. Uh, and there are several others that, that have come out that are, in fact, you know, attempts to move into the entertainment business, but with a uh, Christian message. Right. Well, you mentioned the NIV. Right. What people, some people don't know is that there are a couple of different versions. Of the right, NIV. right. It's a 1984 version and the new version. And the new version. And the new version really does deviate right. significantly from um, what we know to be the As close to right. translation. That's true. All right. Any other questions? And one more thing on the, the entertainment aspect of, of yes, it can have the impact on our on our souls by directing us and saying this type of relationship is more glorious than, or this is the right type of relationship. But it gets worse because when, do, when we sit down and watch TV and watch movies, we want to relax. We want to stop. All right, we want to put down our guard. We just want to give up and, and, uh, right. and just have a good time. And that's what entertainment's for. Like it's okay to, to to rest, but if we're resting and putting down our guard and allowing those messages to talk, we're allowing to penetrate uh, more uh, more deeply. Versus if we watch the movie and say, you know, God, how can you how are you speaking in this? Right. So we have to be on our guard and on watch. That's true. Even with those, those realms of entertainment, we you know, use them. Right. So it's really tailor-made for 
Exploitation. Right. Because yeah, you're, yeah. you're ready for exploitation. We are ready. We're over yourselves. Let's watch. Let's watch. Yeah, it's a, it's actually, it's actually a, uh, a song by Carmen, and in that I don't remember the song, but in that he talks about how a lot of the the deviations that are in human and in, in uh, Christian life. Um, he talks about the, the TV being one of those, and you know all the other things that that it's, it's a mass, right? Mass media and. Uh, reach the masses very quickly uh, with any of the channels now. So. Well, when we mention a movie that is accepted very highly, uh, that was actually written by a Christian with Christian, you know, overtones in the fantasy world, but you know, it is, you know, it's it's a model. Right. That's J.R.R. Tolkien and, and the right. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. There's a lot of lot of the Rings analogies and movie stuff that are mm -hmm. out there. So. I actually have a blog that I maintain called uh, Hidden Treasures. So if you search in Mano for Hidden Treasures, uh, in that there's a category called Movie Motions. So we can, we can, oh, actually, yeah, we just finish. So, um, there's a category called Movie Motions. So if you guys go look at that, I look at different movies and then I try to draw parallels to, to the scripture from that. So, cool. All right. So since he, since he was resurrected into heaven and all, we've tried to follow Jesus the best we could you know, through our imperfect natures. And so that's resulted in divisions among the church from different denominations and different um, organizations. So I think one backboard is, is being a member of, of a specific church and just um, subscribing to that as your salvation. doing the things that, that you're learning in church and you, you're thinking this is salvation or, or I'm a Christian so you know I'm good and we see so, so many people who are uh, you know Christian by name but uh, I think the, the back door is that we can convince ourselves by our knowledge or by the things that we do that we're good and we're saved but the Bible talks about it a little bit differently I have some, some verses to share. John 6, 44 says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I'll raise him up on the last day. And John 6, 63 says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The, front, the flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. And then John 10, 27, 28 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. And finally, Romans 10, 13, 17 says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him who they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him who have, they have not heard? And how are they to hear without some preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah, Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. So these, these scriptures, which is the portion of the Bible, which talks about knowing Jesus and Jesus bringing you salvation and not, you know, organization or system or religion. So I think that's a backdoor where you can fall into it and being a pattern of, of practices and, right. and belief uh, based on organization and missing the relationship of following Jesus. Just through spending time with him, the best way we know to do that is through his word. John seventeen three actually says that, uh, and this is eternal life that you shall know him, knowing Christ. Talking about knowing Christ, so it's knowing Jesus is, is, uh, and it's interesting because I was doing a study on Genesis, and it says Adam knew his wife, and she bore a son. So it's an intimate relationship that we're talking about. It's not a physical, it's a spiritual intimacy that we have with Christ, and to know Christ is eternal life, and the one who sent him, which is God the Father, who sent him because. People, you know, deny to Jesus came. Like even Jehovah's Witness denies 
Jesus came in the flesh, but they believe in God the Father. So, and in fact, in the book of uh, in the, in the letters to the, uh, John that John writes, he says that it's actually the spirit of the Antichrist that is at work in this world. So you can't deny Christ. Without Christ, there is no salvation. Um, the moment our ministry or our minister or our church takes more importance and precedence than the one that we have come to minister for, it is idolatry. Yeah. Right? And so, in fact, if you think about it, uh, the thief on the cross, he probably never attended a church service. Right? <laughs> and he was given the assurance that today you shall be with me in paradise. And so it is not where we worship or, you know, it's who we worship and how we do that by loving him. One of the things that's interesting is here in Austin, we've got kind of an example of you know a, a bunch of different denominations and churches, like 300 plus, right. getting together for the Explore God campaign and really getting people thinking about who God is and, and, and why Jesus oh, came. Right. Yeah. And uh, and like with the Austin Disaster Relief Network, it's you know 120 plus churches that are together in a network, you know, helping to be the hands and feet of Christ to those. In South Austin, who got flooded out, right. and they're they're active right now. So, uh, you know, if you if you are interested in that, adrntx.org has right. sign up where you can you know sign up either as a you know trained volunteer from within ADRN or as a you know act as an open volunteer. And that's actually very scriptural as well and biblical because when he talks about you know in Judgment Day, he talks about those who said. Lord, Lord, and he says, I do not know you. And there are others, he actually says, you did this. And they're like, when did we do this? And he says, when you helped the least of my brethren, right, who did this unto me. So our faith, when not expressed in action, it's just dead faith. So. How are we doing on time? Uh, we're, we're all over. Oh, okay. Any other questions? But it's a good discussion, I think. It's probably the, the most discussion we've had in any, any of the, the meetings so far. I don't know if we've had others, which but it's good. Stuff. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, feel free to network. Uh, we have this room for another 30 minutes or so, so feel free to network. Uh, you know, exchange information. Um, Austin, like you said, is looking uh, for a position, so if there's opportunities, please contact him, hit him up. So Kim came to your church. He came to Great Hills Baptist. In Austin? Yeah. What was that? He was here two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay.